result of poor parenting by Sinola, read by my lost and found summary because let's face it there's no way endeavor ever gave shoto the birds and the bees talk this behavior is utterly unbecoming of a ua student i demand whoever responsible steps forward before the teachers are consulted the entirety of Class 1A stood gathered around the table in the common area, after being yelled at by their student president until they did so. Yayurozu stood awkwardly next to Ida, who looked ready to use Recipro burst on the guilty party. I think, she began, all too aware of how quickly the rest of the class had turned to her. We can assume it's not any of the girls. Ida blanched before his face turned red. Ah, yes, Yayurozu, you are extremely correct. I apologize, ladies. Why not? Everyone turned to Shoto, who stood confused. Why not? Ida questioned. Kaminari lit up with a mischievous grin. Yeah, Toto has a point. What if one of the girls is keeping them for a special guy? The guys began murmuring, but Shoto stood still, still not having moved staring confusedly down at the table where the box of condoms sat. "'I don't understand,' he said, and Midoriya turned to him. "'What's up, Todoroki?' He gestured to the box, noting how Midoriya blushed as he did so. "'Why would they just be for guys?' Midoriya stood, his mouth parted open slightly. "'What?' "'Well, what are they?' he questioned, and Midoriya's jaw dropped. Shoto became somewhat aware of the class quieting around them. Midori was flushed redder than the red half of Shoto's own hair, and he had no idea why. Kirishima spoke up, looking almost nervous. Todoroki, you don't know what these are? Shoto looked at the box, ignoring the strange atmosphere. The box says condoms, so I assume they're condoms, but I don't know what those are. Oh my god! What does Ultra Glide mean? He asked. If Shoto had to think back to his bucket list, he would not remember having sex education lessons from Bakugo on it, yet he felt like this was an experience that needed to be acknowledged on paper. Condoms aren't effective all the time, so if you're fucking horny, then deal with it another way. You're trying to be a hero, not a fucking father. Got it, asshole. Shoto sat on the couch and hesitantly nodded. Kirishima was taking notes across from him. Bakugo noticed the hesitation and groaned. God, didn't either of your parents tell you this shit icy hot? My mother was permanently hospitalized when I was eight, and Endeavor likely didn't think this was important. Bakugo stood still at that, not looking sure of how to respond. Midoriya, who was sitting next to Shoto, was crying, although he didn't know if it was from pity or from also experiencing the sex education talk. Did your parents explain all of this to you? He asked, and Class 1A, who is still present because they hadn't wanted to miss out on Bakugo explaining what an STD was, all slowly nodded their heads. Shoto thought about the weekend visit he had coming up, and he wondered... What are herpes? He asked, and watched as Endeavor slowly lowered his chopsticks. Natsuo was staring at Shoto with a mix of unmasked glee and terror, eyes wide and unbelieving. Fuyumi watched the table with terror, looking as though she'd rather be cooking herself on the stove where the soba was waiting. Shoto continued speaking, determined to see it through. Some of my classmates were talking about it in class, and I don't remember them covering any of that in my classes. Endeavor looked constipated, frozen, and uncomfortable. Shoto, this isn't a discussion to have at the table. He settled on, finally. Why? He questioned innocently, hoping that the phone that was recording this in his pocket was able to catch his father's face. Shoto! Fuyumi hissed, trying to get him to stop the conversation topic. Ignoring Natsuo, who was slapping her arm in excitement. I remember them saying it had to do something with genitals. He wondered aloud, ignoring the obnoxiously loud cackling coming from his brother. 
Endeavor abruptly stood up and left the table, a steady steam of curses and regrets leaving his mouth as he walked. Upon his leaving, Shoto pursed his lips and took his phone out to make sure it had been recorded. Natsuo caught the sight of it and fell onto the floor from the force of his laughs. He ignored the chaos around him and had to force down a laugh when Fuyumi hesitantly asked him if he was being serious earlier. Natsuo was brokenly wheezing on the floor, and ever so often, Shoto continued to hear a wheezing genitals <laughs> from him. Knowing he was in the clear, Shoto allowed a small smirk to fall on his face as he sent the video to the class's group chat. Take that, Bakugo! He absolutely knew how group chats worked. So, Shoto did not know how group chats worked, apparently, because while he meant to send it to the class 1A chat, he ended up sending it to all of his contacts. This brought him to where he was now, sitting in Aizawa Sensei's office. Aizawa stared at him, somehow looking more tired than usual, with a nice hint of defeat. Todoroki. He sighed and closed his eyes for a moment, looking as though he was gathering strength. I need to ask this as your teacher and the lead adult in charge of your current environment, but have you ever had a discussion about sex with your parent or guardian? No, he said. Aizawa looked pained and slowly opened his computer. What about middle school? That's part of the curriculum. Do you remember that? Shoto remembered being pulled out of class at one point, his father saying that the lessons were unnecessary when he could be training. He remembered hearing some of his female classmates giggling, saying he didn't need to be there because he probably already knew what it was. No. He thought about the discussion he had with Bakugo, and chose not to say anything. After all, Aizawa may have some more accurate information with fewer curses. With slow, reluctant hands, Aizawa turned his computer to face Shoto, and on it was the title slide of a PowerPoint presentation titled, Menstruation. The next time he heard Uraraka complaining about her cramps, he stole Endeavor's credit card and bought out the nearest convenience store of chocolate. This one is fucking hilarious. I, it, it's, it's just amazing. I, I can't, I can't even, like, express how great this is. <laughs> I know this one is short and we had like a short one just a few weeks ago, but don't worry, by the time you're finished watching this, the second part of this series should be out and that one's going to be fun. I'd read this one before I recorded it, but haven't read the other one because I didn't realize it existed. So have fun with that and see you there. Bye.